Hello guys and gals, Knuckles Up or Michael here and I'm very excited to talk about today's video. Super quickly before I get into this, I am officially done high school. I wrote my last exam on Wednesday and I'm done. I got graduation next week, but otherwise high school has sailed. So this means for you guys, I will be able to post videos more frequently, which I'm super hyped about. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribe for more content. Also feel free to click the notification bell so you get updates whenever I get a video. Anyway, today's video is about one of my favorite games ever to hit consoles, GTA 5. This whole video was sparked by a discussion I had with my teacher regarding his work analyzing GTA 5. I made the Edith Finch video and the recent Papers Please video for his class and he does some amazing work regarding video games and learning. He said some insightful things and he was the driving force behind this idea. He's also one of my favorite teachers ever and I learned a lot in his class. So sir, if you're watching this, this one is for you. If you have been living under an 8-bit rock the last two decades, you may not have heard of the GTA series. Here's a quick history lesson. Upon its release 20 years ago in 1997, Grand Theft Auto hit shelves and was instantly one giant red flag. Angry parents set out to take the games out of the hands of their children due to the game's pretty hardcore violence and themes at the time. Side note, <laughs> I find it very funny. Just video game violence 20 years ago is hilarious. Like one time this was considered horrific. <sighs> Funny how time flies. Anyway, let's just say the campaign to end the game was very unsuccessful, and after plenty of titles and expansions, GTA 5 was released for the Xbox 360 and PS3 in 2013, with next generation consoles getting remastered versions a couple of years later. GTA 5 is so successful that it has earned a top 5 spot for the highest selling games of all time. Enough about the past, why do I like the game in the series? Well the main reason is the rush of playing it as a kid, that will always stick with me. My oldest brother Louis bought a copy of San Andreas for the PS2 and my eyes were glued to the TV. I only got to play it when he wasn't there because he refused to let me play it. After all, I was only like 10 or 11 and the game was rated M for mature, but when I got the chance I had a ton of fun playing it. Talking specifically about GTA 5, the replayability of this game is unreal. I have played the story mode four times to this point. First time to play, second time because why not, third time to revisit it four years later, and the fourth time to try and get the most money I possibly could. Let me reiterate rate that. It took me until my fourth replay of the story mode to get bored of the game enough to want to complete with different objectives in mind. I haven't even mentioned just replaying the game, just going out and customizing a car, playing a round of golf, or mowing down a crowd of innocent civilians, just wholesome family fun. Eh, maybe not that last one. Anyway, the online mode was killer, the customization was amazing, and the game just offers so much for you to do. At its core, it's a very fun game. Now with that out of the way, let's get to the real discussion. How the game mocks you. Now, you may be a tad confused as to what I mean. More specifically, the game is laughing at you. GTA 5 is making fun of its audience through stereotyping, and you are most likely oblivious to it. How are they doing this? Well, GTA 5 is riddled with stereotypes. The game is one walking fail of the Bechdel test in video game form, and if you don't know what that is, look it up. Black people in gangs, white people trailer trash, females on the stripper pole, white affluent sons pretending to live the gang life, daughters willing to trade wink wink favors for movie roles, slimy Europeans, the brown yoga stud, and even the stereotypes that Rottweilers are aggressive dogs. Aw, but Chop is just so cute, oh shit. Anyway, the list goes on and on, but the important one I mentioned and his white affluent son that's pretending to live the gang life. Who is this character in the story? None other than Jimmy DeSanta, Michael's son. Back to the question, how does GTA 5 directly make fun of their players? Jimmy is your answer. In the game, you play as one of three characters periodically. Michael, the rich guy going through a bit of a midlife crisis, Trevor, the druggy, white trash, Breaking Bad-esque kinda guy, and finally Franklin, the token black guy who lives in the ghettos until his life of crime earns him a nice house and a ton of cash. Now Franklin is the important one here, and this is where Jimmy comes back in. Jimmy is 20 years old and still lives at home with his parents. He spends his time primarily playing video games and also doing drugs on the side. He's always doing one or another, if not both, at the same time. He's also clearly white, somewhere between Apple Crunch and Peach Glow Shade, arguably the two whitest sounding color names ever to exist, and he has had an easy and wealthy upbringing. But despite all this, he dresses, speaks, and acts like he's from Strawberry, Franklin's ghetto rather than Vinewood, Los Santos's luxury strip where Jimmy has lived his whole life. And why is this the case? Jimmy is one walking oxymoron, and why is that? I believe that this is because Rockstar is trying to make fun of its audience. Side note, every time I think of Jimmy, I think of the scene from Gran Torino, and it's just... It's just so cringy. It... Man. Yeah, it's cool, dog.
Anyway, let's break down the data. You are playing a video game in which you play as three different characters, one of whom is from the African-American side of town. Likewise, in the GTA series, the game San Andreas is entirely focused on the gang life of CJ, another black man involved in gang life. Let's break down some gamer statistics. According to a collection of data by Statistica, in the US, just under 60% of gamers are between the less than 18 and 35 years old, the same age classification as Jimmy. To add on, Jimmy is 20 years old and has not moved out of the house yet, reinforcing the stereotype that gamers live in their parents' houses until they're old. In the last 12 years, gamers have been majority male dominated with females not falling far behind. The gap between the sexes and gamers usually ranges from 5 to 15% away from 50-50 from year to year. Similarly, as of 2015, a breakdown of ethnicity in gamers found that nearly 70% of gamers are white in the United States, while all other races are trailing behind with less than 15% of the pie. Jimmy is a white man. The kinds of games that Jimmy plays are fairly common among those attracted to the GTA series, such as Righteous Slaughter 7, a game similar to that of a COD campaign or CSGO type game. Those attracted to GTA 5, especially in the YouTube and stream community, were involved heavily in different FPS games before hopping on the GTA 5 hype wagon. Similarly, the communities of these FPS games transferred with those YouTubers. Why is this all important? Well, based on average gamers and the lifestyle Jimmy presents, it is clear that Rockstar is comparing Jimmy to the average white gamer who is pretending to live in a black cultural facade. Jimmy existing is Rockstar Games holding a one-way mirror pointed directly at you. While you can see the game in front of you, you are completely oblivious to what's looking back at you. Jimmy, a white male 20 year old gamer who still lives in his parents house and is trying to live a gang life, Jimmy trying to be Franklin is comparable to the average gamer trying to live in a Compton like setting by playing a fictional video game, with over stereotyped characters that do not represent the real circumstances and cultural issues surrounding those communities. Rockstar is comparing you, the predominantly white and male GTA 5 player, to Jimmy and comparing Jimmy's relationship with Franklin to your relationship with the game. Now of course you're not a racist or culturally appropriating any Anything by playing this harmless game. It's laughable if you take GTA as a serious representation of our society and the problems within it. The game is just one giant stereotype joke, but Jimmy in this game is pretty funny. I wish I was making this up, but when I played San Andreas as a kid, I would yell at the TV, you will respect my authority whenever I ran over someone in my car. I'm not kidding, 10 year old me said authority, not authority just to try to sound cool, and Jimmy is Rockstar's way of making fun of me for doing that. Anyway guys, this was a pretty cool video, I hope you enjoyed this one today. Some interesting ideas were brought to the table. Let me know what you think in the comment section below if you've fallen victim to the authority kind of thing in the past while playing GTA. Let me know if you have not played GTA and let me know if you agree or disagree. I'm always up for a discussion. Anyway guys, like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you have not. Comment down below what you want to see in the future and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.